Here is an example of a fairly simple cash flow risk analysis model. It's comprised of four sheets. The first sheet is cash flow analysis, where it has the final output, which is a net present value calculation. You can see that this is shown with a sparkling histogram. And then we've got a couple of other outputs here, one array output for the net income, an input for initial sales price, maybe some other inputs, another output here, time to complete, an embedded chart for itself. And uh, in the other sheets, we got two decision options. We can choose two different scenarios within run. Base scenario where we don't invest any extra money and towards increasing our market share and the effort scenario where we do. Then there are some other inputs in here in the market conditions. And finally, the results table. The results table uh, uses the model risk functions like uh, FOS and mean to calculate the mean of the net present results and for the sim percentile, which calculates a cumulative percentile for, for example, in this case, net income for the base scenario, Emietsu scenario, and another embedded chart. When we run a simulation in model risk, we click on start simulation. No, if I don't want to save for previous or simulator results, the simulation runs. Here we're running 1,000 samples, each of two different simulations. And then when the simulation run, run is complete, it will open to the results viewer, which is a separate application of model risk in which we can see all the simulation results that didn't come up with the model. Now, because I've already built this model and I've already defined a number of graphs for inputs and outputs, you will see that this is populated already. So we've got various different charts in different tabs here. The way the results viewer works is on the left-hand side, we have a list of the different simulation runs. We had two runs, base and extra. Then there are the list of the different outputs that we have in the model. So we have Ambiso organized by the workbook and then the worksheet. So net income has one set of variables we've got here. Can MBV result is another output. Under the inputs, we've got the sheet marking conditions and you see all the inputs here and another sheet cash flow analysis where you've got again, more inputs in the center pane we have a list of the different graphs that we want to look at or we've created. And on the right-hand side, we have statistics associated with any of the input variables or output variables that are displayed inside the graph. And you can see here, there are plenty from 2025 to 2034, their cash flow analysis variables. And so we can click through and see all these different variables, statistics and in the right-hand pane. So whenever we want to insert a chart, we just click on the insert button. We select the type of chart we want to create, for example, histogram. And then we select the variables we want to include. So let's get rid of those. Let's just look at this, say, the time to complete. So here is a simulation results for the time to complete under the base scenario. I could take the base scenario and I could add the results for the picture scenario. So we bought these two side by side. I have sliders which I can apply or I can remove and I can do a lot of different charting um, formatting. Uh, for example, I can right mouse click here and I can choose a background color if I want. That's ghastly. Let's get rid of that. I can do a lot of different things with the formatting by clicking on the histogram options because we're in histogram. These were appear as histogram options. And you can see I didn't change the type, for example. I can change it to a cumulative ascending plot or a preto plot or a box plot called cumulative descending. I can change the formatting for the horizontal axis or vertical axis of the chart. I can switch from bars to lines, for example. I can change the number of histogram bars to say 30 from 50 or make it automatic. I can switch off those sliders or I can pegit the sliders for instance, back on again, I can edit them. For example, maybe I want the fifth percentile and the 95th percentile, I can apply that. Okay, now you see the fifth and 95th percentile showing. I can uh, add the legend or remove it. 
And that goes for pretty much every graph that's inside of the results view. So Q and two descending, shown here for all, each year of income. I've got a box bot. The box for, of those net income by year, you can see it's negative in the first couple of years and then positive in four years. This is one view that I can use for the box whisker plot. Another way I can do it is to look at the, just the standard box whiskers, so I can toggle. I can change the percentiles that I want sharing. Um, so for example, this is sharing the one percentile and then the 10th and the 25th, etc. I can change that to the setting of the fifth percentile. Hit enter and it will edit the graph. Tornado charts. So these are sensitive analysis charts. I can uh, change this from a conditional mean for, or well, this is a cumulative percentile. I can change that to the conditional mean plot, for example. Oh, there are a variety of different ways that you can do it. And depending on which, which option you choose, you'll find that you have different controls associated with that option. I've got a scatter plot. Scatter plots I'm showing, for example, here, base and extra scenarios together of net present value against the market growth rate. I can show just one or both. I can include a medium point here or not. I can show a target crosshairs. So if I want to put a particular target value in, like for example, 0.5 for the horizontal axis, then uh, maybe 0.7 for the vertical axis, you can see the, it's telling me the probability of being above and below on each of these quadrants. I can change the mode from showing the percentiles to the values. So when you see the values here, you will see this correlation level may be a little bit more than you did before. I can choose to show all of the values or just a few of them. So if you run 10,000 points, you will have a much denser plot. Then I've got trend plots. So a trend plot is showing me the how one variable net income is evolving over time. And again, because we've got specific chart, we can change, for example, I want the midline, which is kind of the spread line here. And like what we'll change that to the mean instead of the 50th percentile. And I can change the graphs, the color schemes, et cetera, as I want. We have a statistics table where you can see the different outputs that you select and their mean, the minimum, maximum, any errors that were simulated any values you might filter. So for example, if I go into home, I can click on the filter option and I can filter the 2023 values to have it some range. And then he will only see the simulation results for that particular range. Then I'd have a list. This is a list of all the sample values that were generated during the simulation. So we're sharing here all of these, the values of the net present value and all of these input variables. If I click on so any one column header, it will change the ordering so that, for example, in here, I got net present value and sample number 93 was giving me the largest generated value from net present value. So I can right mouse click and click go to sample and that will put into the spreadsheet that particular value. So 34.6 million, if I go to the cash flow analysis where that help helpful was, there's a 34.6 million. You'll notice that when I ran the simulation, the, each of these different charts was updated as a result. It's very easy to embed a chart inside of the model. All you do is you go into a place where you would like to see that chart in Excel. Then you click on the box plot and then you pink chart, for example, new ink chart and there it will paste it in the sheet and you can move it around in that sheet wherever you want it to be. And then next time you're on a simulation, that chart will be updated with the latest values. We have an embedded Excel report. So what we did in this model, I move that up where a little bit, you can see in the results table. Here, there was a, a table that we created based on simulation results of those in percentile, for example, and you see the exact same table being replicated here. To do that, you go into the Excel model, you highlight the array, then you click on 
inputs, outputs, add simulation and embedded Excel report. Once you do that, then you will see that, that it will appear as an auction, uh, an input auction inside of this chart. So I can just show you that that already exists here by clicking on the delete just to show you the list. And it's easy to do, just like everything else. You insert and you go insert embedded report and then a new one comes up and I can select whichever one I want to use. If you want to get rid of a, a tab, you just right now click close. We have uh, different scatter plots. So the first scatter plot over here, we were looking at our crosshairs and we were we we're doing an analysis and we put up the screen again. We are doing an analysis of the relationship between the market growth rate and the net present value. There. Or in this other one, we want to look at the time to completion against the product development cost. So in a typical project, there is a relationship between how long it takes to read something and how much it costs to do that work. So what we're seeing in here is this line separating a certain fraction of value. So each of these points, simulated points, it would see at this particular probability, 60%, I can change that to say 80%. You see, for each one of those, 80% of the simulated values were or less than both the had a smaller production development cost and a smaller time to completion. And this boundary here creates the scenario where that's really the top 20 percentile of possible results. Um, but that's for more is worse for each variable. So the time to complete, more time it takes to complete, it's worse. The, the more it costs is worse, but you can change that if it's something else. Like if it was a money saved, then you would say, well, that more is better. Then you would change that to more is better. The great thing about the model risk results here is that if you make all of these changes and then you save the file in Excel, then just click on save, then the next time you run it, it will produce exactly the same charts, but with whatever are the latest simulation results. So for example, I just close this. And if I was to change in the cash flow analysis, go to one of the inputs like this one here, then we just change this to Cortic. It's from 45, and I'm going to rerun the model. As it's simulating, it will be using this new input values into the model. So we're running first one simulation, and then second simulation. And now it's generating all of the different results that we wanted to see in the different graphs, but it's using the latest input values in, in the model. So it's very easy to create a report like this by simply updating the inputs and it will automatically generate the charts. Two other things that are very, very useful about the results view. The first is that if you go to the home button, then you can create a report. Click on that. And it will ask you what you want to create. Well, you can create it for all variables. That's a little overkill. But the tasks that were inside the results viewer, you can include the underlying data, which is useful. Perhaps if you choose an Excel option, you want to take those simulated values or histogram heights, etc., and reuse them in another type of graph. You can also export the graphs to PowerPoint if you want to do a PowerPoint presentation quickly, or Microsoft Word or PDF. Let me pick the PowerPoint option right now. Click report. Now it's open PowerPoint. And you can see it is generating all of these different charts. So now I can look at this PowerPoint presentation. You can format it to show different uh, logos, etc., and remove some of the formatting for the chart. Vary all up, all the graphs and charts that we created. So it's extremely easy as a matter of minutes if you want to change the input values in your model or add some outputs, a matter of minutes to go from there to having the final results that you can present to your colleagues. Funny, the last thing you can do with the results viewer is that you can go file, save, and this will save a 
simulation results file. So the simulation results file is something that can be shared amongst other model risk users without having to share the underlying models that you use to create the results. And when they do so, if they open that simulation results file with the results viewer, then they are able to create and change uh, the color formatting of the reports and remove variables, add variables, etc. They can't change the underlying data, but they could create whichever reports that, that particularly of interest to them. And they can um, then go to the home and create their version of a report as well. 